All right. Uh, so here we are um, continuing on in First John. Uh, today, we're going to look at First John uh, 4, 17. We, we started with 17 last week. We didn't finish, so we're going to finish 17 and move into 18. But last week, we saw that um, when we know and believe the love of God, when we know it and believe the love of God, we dwell in God and he in us. And that is God's love being perfected in us. So let's see how John continues talking about this perfect love, this 1 Corinthians 13 love that we are attaining to, that God has filled us with. Let's see what this perfect love, how it works out, all right? So 1 John 4, 17 and 18. I'm going to read both verses to start us out. <laughs> Herein is our love made perfect that we, may, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear has torment. He that fears is not made perfect in love. So let's go and finish 1 John 4, 17. Last week we said, herein is our love made perfect, and we talked about this perfect love that indwells us and how we're to attain to that love being perfected in us, brought to completion, finalized. And what that really is, what that manifestation of that love being perfected in us, is that we have boldness, boldness in the day of judgment. That's the blank in your bulletin. When love is perfected in us, we have boldness in the day of judgment, that perfect love perfected in us. See, 1 John, it's not the first time he said this. 1 John chapter 2, verse 28, he says, And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. See, we can, we can have boldness or confidence in that day of judgment. We don't have to be ashamed or fearful. Remember, Hebrews 4.16 says that we can boldly enter into the throne room of grace. Now, let me just uh, clarify that. Boldness. <clears throat> Being not ashamed, not feared. Fear, uh, not fearful. That this is um, a um, um, a wary confidence. Don't don't treat it like it's flippant. Don't treat it as casual. I think sometimes the enemy has given us this. Um, Santa God, this, this, um, grandpa God, um, this, because Abba Father means daddy. It's a in term of endearment for your father. But we have reduced it to, um, we just, we just can just, Go in there and act silly. Irreverent. I'm telling you right now. This I can only imagine when I stand in your presence or to my knees will I fall. That doesn't even scratch the surface. When you stand in the presence of God, you won't be going uh, willy-nilly up to the throne room of grace and say, Why? Why? Did my little dog run away? You! Why did you? You won't do it. Now you have confidence to stand in his presence. 
because of what Christ Jesus has done for you and the love that is perfectly indwelling in you. But you will not be irreverent. You will not be casual, and you will not be flippant. This is the creator of the universe outside everything we think we know. You will not go into that ridiculously. But you can have confidence. You can have confidence. See, John goes on to say in that, that thought, Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. That, that finishes the love. That brings it to completeness. That is where our love is made perfect. Because we can stand in the presence of a holy God. Because as Jesus is, so are we in this world. Now, I, I replaced the pronoun there, he, with Jesus. So in the bulletin, you can either write, as he is, so are we in this world. Or you can put in the word Jesus, as Jesus is, so are we in this world. Well, again, this is not something that is new in this letter that John is writing. Look what John wrote to us in chapter 2, verse 6. He that says he abides in him, okay, so if you say you abide in God, if you say you abide in Christ, in Jesus, if you say that, ought himself also to walk, even as he walked? So you say you live in him, well, shouldn't you act like he acted? Shouldn't you walk like he walked? What would Jesus do? Look what the enemy's done with that. Turn that into a ridiculous bracelet or a bookmark. But the fact is, what would Jesus do? How would Jesus treat this person? How would Jesus act in this situation? Where would Jesus walk? What would Jesus do? That's as Jesus is, so are we in this world. What was his command? A new command I give to you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. See, he said, do it the way I've done it. And how did Jesus love? Sacrificially. He laid down his life for me. For you. He didn't think equality with God was something to hold on to. He gave it up and took on the form of a servant. Putting on flesh and then dying a criminal's death on a cross as propitiation for me, as replacement for me. Now, Love that way. Look, look what else he says. <clears throat> when he was praying about you all. When he was praying for you all. In John 17, verse 21, Jesus is praying for you all. Us and me too. I pray that they will be one, just as you and I are one, as you are in me, Father, and I am in you, and may they be in us, so that the world will believe you sent me. Unity. Now, good, good uh, little... Reminder this morning in Sunday school, unity doesn't mean proximity. Okay? 
And division doesn't mean different buildings. Unity means one in the spirit. And how is that accomplished? By Christ in us, the hope of glory, glory, which brings us into God, where we abide and dwell. Just like a branch dwells, abides in the vine. John 15, I am the vine, you are the branches. Abide in me and I'll abide in you. That's how we live, perfect completeness. God in us, Christ in God, we in him. We, they, us, them, right there. That perfect unity. Can we attain it? It'll take a lifetime. But John also told us, as he is, so will we be. <clears throat> and then he gets to this idea of perfect love that casts out fear. First John 4.18, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear has torment. <clears throat> There are a lot of different words we could use here. Fear. Anything that torments you. Anxiousness. Um, worry. Those are all degrees of fear. From this word, which is literally phobia. Right? Do you know what a phobia is, right? Like... Uh, uh, arachnophobia is an extreme fear of spiders, like irrational fear. That's the word here. Perfect love casts out that fear. But it also can include, um, there's lots of other words. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not good at Greek, but like anxiousness and worry, those are all degrees of fear. Fear, trepidation, good word. Yeah, no synonyms. Okay, the thing is, uh, Noah read us this morning, Matthew 6, right? Let's look at Matthew 6. Oh, that was your homework. I knew you already did it, so I, I'm just going to do what you already did. Matthew 6, 31. So don't worry about these things. Saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. Unbelievers worry about that stuff. But your heavenly father already knows all your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. Come on, what is it? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Hallelujah. Now let's do it around. Now, so don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. All right. Everybody got their shoes off? Because I'm going to step on some toes. Mm. Well, she's safe. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, first, I will say this. Don't worry about tomorrow. Okay? Don't worry about tomorrow. Oh, we would never worry. Okay. 
Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't be uh, wise and that you shouldn't uh, work and, and be able to provide for yourself. But this is the thing. Too many believing people have go bags ready for when the world will end. And we got to stock up rice and beans. And we got to get this all stored up for when the time comes. Is that what, is that any time you read about future things, does Jesus ever say, build big barns and stock them full? Make sure that you can have um, food packets that'll last 25 years, go out and bury them in the woods so that you can run out to them when the end comes. Does he ever say that? What does he say? Don't worry about what we'll eat, what we'll drink, and what we'll wear. Unbelievers worry about that. Oh, we'll just, we'll just build onto the church and we'll pack all the food in there. We'll all learn how to can and we'll put all our stuff in there. And then we can just leave little tracks. Because, you know... I'm not sure if we're pre-trib or mid-trib or post-trib, but I know we're going to need this food maybe, but maybe we won't. So we'll have it in case we do. Don't worry, don't worry. But we'll leave a track in there in case we're gone so people who find it that are left in the tribulation will get saved. If you're reading this note, we're gone. Um, hope you enjoy the food. Get saved. Don't kid yourselves. Do not kid yourselves. I have been around groups that have done it. It's fear. All rolled up in Christianity. Packaged, a nice little package called um, pre preparation. Be, be careful with that. Be careful with that. There's a fine line between being sensible and worry. It's where you place your trust. Perfect love, understanding the love of God in your life, takes away that fear. It takes away that fear. I'm not just saying that, oh, you know, oh, come what may, I'm just going to... I'm not saying to be foolish about it, but I am saying, do we put our trust in cinder block buildings full of grain, or do we put our trust in the Lord? Philippians 4, 6 and 7. Well, how many times have we read this? Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Ask God for what you need and thank him for what he's done. And then the perfect peace that passes understanding will rule and reign in your hearts. He'll guard your hearts and your mind as you live in Christ Jesus. That worry, that anxiousness, that fear of the unknown, the worry, the fear about things going on in our life are erased when perfect love 
becomes perfected in us. See, that goes back to where he said in verse 17. Right? There's no anxiousness, no worry about the day of judgment for us. We have boldness to stand in the presence of God. Now, that, 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 and now this. Luke 12. <clears throat> Luke 12, verses 4 through 7. Dear friends, don't be afraid of those who can kill your body, who want to kill your body. That's another fear, especially in this day. When, when Luke is writing this down, this is a, a genuine fear that um, there are people who want to kill your body. The, the Christians in this day, they were in fear of being killed gruesomely. And, 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 and Luke writes down what Jesus says, Dear friends, don't be afraid of those who want to kill your body. They cannot do any more to you after that. That's all they can do, kill the body. But I tell you, whom to fear, fear God, who has the power to kill you and then throw you into hell. Yes, he's the one to fear. What is the price of five sparrows, two copper coins? Yet God does not forget a single one of them. And the very hairs on your head are all numbered. <clears throat> so don't be afraid. You are more valuable to God than a whole flock of sparrows. See, this gets back to what I said about boldness. God is fearful. <laughs> He, he, he is awesome. God is awesome. This body dying is nothing. The soul that I'm speaking to right now, it will be put to death by the one who created it. That's the one to fear. Not the man that takes down the tent. It's the one who put you in you. That's the one to fear. And we should. In a way, we should fear God, but not the judgment of God. See, there's a separation from that. God is to be feared. Proverbs tells us, the, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But that's not judgment we have to be afraid of. That's the judge we should fear. The judgment thing is taken care of. Love assures us of that. Perfect love, perfected in us, gives us confidence in the day of judgment. But that judge is still pretty fearful. Awesome. Psalm 119, that if you're reading that five-day, we had to read Psalm 119 this way. Not had to, we got to. The longest book of the Bible, Psalm 119. In verse 120, it says, I tremble in fear of you. We, there should be a little of that. We've created, or not we, but the enemy. I, I'm telling you, it's the enemy who has created this, this fluffy grandpa, gray beard in heaven, get upon my knee. I lost my thing again. What did I do with it? And um, and it's it's a lie. It's a lie. The thing is, the creator of your soul can also be the destroyer. He is to be 
feared. Now, one thing I didn't write in here, but um, Pat brought it up, this spiritual warfare, right? That can be scary to some people, but we need to know. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. He created that, and he can destroy the um, the spiritual beings as well as us. God, God is great. And uh, again, Les picks out uh, this great song, you know, a mighty fortress is our God, right? And though this world with devils filled should threaten to undo us, we will not fear. For God hath willed his truth to triumph through us. The prince of darkness grim, we tremble not for him. His rage we can endure, for lo, his, his doom is sure. One little word will fell him. Get thee behind me. Resist the devil and he will flee. The word above all earthly powers, no thanks to them abideth. The spirit and the gifts are ours through him who with us sideth. Let goods and kindred go, the mortal life also, the body they may kill. God's truth abideth still. His kingdom is forever. We don't have to fear that. Perfect love drives out fear. Even in the spiritual war. Now, but the other side of that coin is this. On the day of judgment, there will be those who will be trembling that will be fearful. Those who have not known and believed the love of God, right? We, we studied that, and we have known, verse 16, and we have known and believed the love that God has towards us. God is love, and he that dwells in love dwells in God. Herein is our love made perfect that we have boldness in the day of judgment, when we know and believe the, the love of God, that perfect love of God, that he sent his son to die for us, when we know and believe it, we have no fear during judgment. But if you don't, that awesome God that you're going to stand before during judgment, you will be fearful. Revelation says you'll be a coward. Revelation 21 verse 7 says, He that overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers, and the whoremongers, and the sorcerers, and the idolaters, and the liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. That boisterous, nah, God, nah, show me God. Will turn into a whimpering, Coward in his presence. You won't stand in the presence of God defiant. The fearful, unbeliever, the abominable, the murderer, the whoremonger, the sorcerer, the idolater, and liar will burn in the lake of fire, which is the second death. You fear the one who can destroy the soul and the body. Hebrews 10.
Hebrews 10, uh, 26 through 31. Dear friends, if we deliberately continue sinning after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there is no longer any sacrifice that will cover these sins. Whew. There's only the terrible expectation of God's judgment and the raging fires that will consume his enemies. For anyone who refuses to obey the law of Moses was put to death without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Just think how much worse the punishment will be for those who have trampled the Son of God and have treated the blood of the covenant, which made us holy as if it were common and unholy, and have insulted and disdain the Holy Spirit who brings God's mercy to us. For we know the one who said, I will revenge, I will pay back. He also said the Lord will judge his own people. It is a terrible or fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. It's terrible. Unless we have the perfect love of God in our hearts. How do we do that? We know it and we believe it. We are sealed with the spirit of promise. He takes us from the kingdom of darkness into light. And then we struggle to... My little children, I write these to you so that you sin not. We work to be pure as he is pure. We work to be holy as he is holy. We work to have perfect love that is patient and kind, does not envy, does not boast, keeps no record of wrong, rejoices with the truth. We work for that to be perfected in us. And how will we know? How will we know when it's perfect and brought to completion? We'll stand in his presence on judgment day with boldness. You have to know and believe it. So, with that, I pray that you all have heard this enough over and over and over that you will Take care of that. The, 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 in James, James says that the, the devils believe there is one God. That's good, but they, they tremble when they, they believe it. So there's got to be more than just an understanding that God loves you. There has to be a real trust and a real settledness that idea that I believe and trust that Jesus came, died, and rose again, that God loved me so much to seek and save me. So, uh, take care of it today. So with that, I'm going to invite our musicians and singers to sing chorus 157. And as we sing that, um, I just want to remind you that this, this world, there's a lot of things to, that, that try to distract us away, to make us worry, to make us anxious, to make us fearful. But we need to be reminded that one day, <laughs> this is all going to be over, and all this will be worth it, and that's what this little chorus sings, uh, reminds us. Chorus 157, When We See Christ. Yeah. 
Heavenly Father, help us to bravely run the race, to run it without fear, anxiousness, or worry. Lord, perfect that perfect love in us. So though we know you're an awesome and terrifying God, we can stand boldly with confidence in your presence, knowing that your grace is sufficient, your mercy has been applied, that your Son has taken away our sins as far as the east is from the west. So, Lord, let us stand today living a life that reflects the belief that you've given to us. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now.